A lot of you guys know one of my absolute favorite things to do videos on in the Hunter Classic is a kind of replication of a real life hunt I'm going on. And this year, I'm headed to the state of Indiana for their firearm season. And due to the regulations around firearms on public land in Indiana, I'll be bringing my inline muzzleloader, which works out really well. Because as far as allowed firearms on public land that also exist in the Hunter Classic, we don't have many options, but I do have an inline muzzleloader that fires the exact same thing, 45 caliber sabots, and that's going to work out good. I'll be filming that hunt, and my buddy Aaron's coming along with me. He'll be using a 12 gauge pump with slugs, so we've also got that on our hunt here in Classic. And as far as picking a map that's similar to Indiana, nothing's perfect, but Southern Whiteheart is going to be kind of the closest thing. So we're going to hunt around, see if we can find a big whitetail, and hopefully it'll be a good omen for our real life hunt. So, one long drive later, and we're here for our hunt in Indiana. Now, I don't know how exactly I'm going to schedule this stuff just yet. This video may come out on the day I'm going to Indiana, it may come out on the day I get back. It just depends how the scheduling goes. But one thing I do know is that hopefully any bucks that we encounter are going to be a little bit bigger than this. 55 to 75 as our first deer. <laughs> Not only that, he is determined to use that tree as a shield. Eventually, he's got to pick a side and he's going to stop back there for good measure. There's a doe walking down here. So we're going to sidestep that and drop him. And that gets us going here on Whiteheart Island. Now, to be fair, I did say we're going to be hunting on public land and I've never shot a public land buck. So I may shoot one this size if that opportunity arose. But 57 score, hard shot with the inline. And hopefully it'll only be up from here, at least in terms of classic bucks. So starting to move in the right direction 105 to 125 for that guy and we'll stick with the inline muzzleloader here still a, a shot we could probably do with slugs but definitely on the outer range of what we want to try for that so if he'll just clear that tree and they are doing pretty good at finding barriers today two for two on hard shots or at least i believe that's gonna be a hard shot looking pretty decent actually based on impact boy i did not think we aimed that high i'm Gonna say maybe not a hard shot. Still insta dropped. Yeah, left lung, shoulder blade, and stomach. I was so sure we aimed way lower than that. Either way, 120 score. It gets the job done. And we'll probably eventually make our way onto the northern island just because the southern island is kind of small. But I want to try to work as much aground as we can down here. Just because, species wise at least, it's a lot more kind of true to life to where we'll be. And kind of back to where we started 40 to 65 for this guy as we're just trying to go around and like i said sort of make the most of southern whiteheart island there's just not a ton of ground so working our way almost all the way down to the coast here on the west side of the map just sort of swinging up and around to move back north but i think we had 57 as our first one 120 is our second one our third one i think he may fall even shy of 57 double on him with the shotgun slugs 57 again well i did say hopefully only up from there that is unfortunately down by point two well, go figure hunting around on whiteheart island there are going to be coyotes just kind of roaming about and maybe that's something else to focus on however we do have another buck coming in and maybe this time moving in the right direction for good 115 to 135 we will go back to the inline and I don't think we'll attempt a hard shot here. Low on that wouldn't be ideal, but going to drop him there with a frontal shot. And I think we're going to be right back in that 120 area. There's a decent chance, I would say, because he does have good time length, that he'll be our best buck of the hunt, which he's only our fourth one. So I guess not a terrible thing. Hopefully at least like 123 somewhere in that area. That was a hard shot, oddly enough. 116 for him. So not our biggest. And that shot must have been just almost across the back of the heart. Kind of looking at what we did, but sure, why not? Hard shot on that one when I didn't think there was any chance. Last time, kind of thought we had it. Must have shot way over it. Kind of seems like we are living in average buck land. 85 to 110 on this guy. Gonna stick with the inline in this case as well. Only because I did remember to actually reload it. And the one positive has been... No track necessary on any of these bucks. And I do find when we use the inline, 
Sometimes those single long shots, things like that, do turn into a short track job. 106 for that, so I wouldn't say moving in the right direction, but at least staying north of three digits, that will take. Now, this is interesting. We have a 75 to 85 kilo buck coming in, and we were tracking one that I believe was 80 to 95, so he most certainly could be the same deer. I felt like he got here kind of fast, and I'm kind of curious if that's actually the buck that we're trying to call in. Now, there's not much we can do about it. We're almost going to have to take him, but I want him to get all the way up here. For one, maybe we can identify a track and just see what comes up. Also, if the other buck were coming in, maybe we'd have a shot, but we're just going to have to take him. And that is, in fact, him. So, 80 to 95 kilo track, going to be basically 80 to 85, knowing what we now know from the estimate. He's 80.0. Go figure, but 121, that is our biggest buck in the hunt. I think buck number five or six, still looking for that one good one. And we're almost all the way kind of through the southern island. We'll kind of loop around this lake here, maybe make our way down through and then up. Hopefully that area or maybe the southern part of the northern island is going to be holding better deer. You know, at this point, I'll take any improvement we can get. 105 to 130 on that guy? The one sticker may actually cost him, but that is definitely mid-120s rack. Got a couple of stickers. Three, I think? He's still going to fall short of, I think, our best one. But we're going to take him with the inline. And honestly, it's kind of getting to where we'll likely fast travel back south to the southern island. I mean, we're kind of moving around up here. We get much north of this. There could be whitetail that have wandered up there. But we're starting to get into blacktail, turkeys, elk, things like that. And even if there are whitetail, we're probably going to be hearing turkey calls nonstop. The odds that we get a grunt just aren't as good. There were no doubt some tracks left on the southern island. A couple of lower weight ones that we didn't follow. Maybe there's a big buck down there with a low weight that we can run into. So lung liver stomach ends up being a 117 with those stickers. Like I said, living in average whitetail buck land today. I mean, this is <laughs> incredible. It's the same buck every time it feels like. 120 to 145. Went to the shotgun there because I'm pretty sure we never loaded the muzzle loader after the last one. We did not. So, could have been bad to just stand up and start reloading that then. I don't know if every harvest we have so far is a buck. I think that's the case, which would make this one number eight. Lung liver stomach again, 129.8. It's our biggest buck to this point. But it's amazing how there's just a lack of big frame deer anywhere. You know, there are just certain hunts in certain videos that just can't end with nothing decent. And this feels like one of those. A video in which I talked about hopefully kind of setting the tone for a decent hunt in Indiana in real life. We were about five hours in between kind of the original hunt, everything that's been in this video up to now, and now two separate hunts just trying to find a decent buck. Finally one here, 145 to 170. And I would say that is very much a decent buck. So we'll take him, hopefully 160 or so. I think there's a chance he's like high 150s. He's got good long tines, a good frame, but I want to say he's maybe a six by six. Either way though, I think it'll be a pretty nice spot for a trophy shot down here. Maybe some of that kind of fog will still be in frame. But right up against the lake like that, in the sun, not too bad. He is, in fact, a 6x6, six six, but a good one, as I said. I mean, a 12 point, if there's going to be a, a total number of times to get it, would be a 12. Long shot, almost at 160, 159.37. So we'll get a trophy photo of him. We have our fluorescent orange. We've got our inline. I think we have just enough space over here in the sun to make this work. But that is just sometimes how it goes. Determination and, I guess to a degree, time put in and luck until we get a decent buck to show up. 159 will do. And hopefully, determination and kind of raw willpower can get it done on our out-of-state hunt as well. So, like I said, I'll be filming that hunt. That video will come out on this channel probably sometime next month if we can manage to get that done but good to come out here do nothing but whitetail hunting and 
finally get a good buck down with the inline muzzle loader. And we'll see where that brings us as far as the real life hunt. And like I said, I don't know exactly when this video is going to come out. Maybe by the time this video is out, the result of that hunt is already known. Just kind of depends on how prepping all these videos and how everything falls together kind of goes. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.